So this is my background. I've been in the industry for over 30 years. So I'm a trend hunter. I've had 30 years of, I have an international marketing degree. I lived in Europe for three years. I lived in uh, Denmark and studied there at the University of Copenhagen. I worked at Mattel, which is kind of the university of the big guys for over a dozen years. And you learn how to do everything right and like high class and with a lot of money. And then you go to a smaller manufacturer and figure out how to do it for no money and how to get you know, great results. And I worked at NPD Research also for five years. Um, I've been a trend hunter across Europe. Um, I'm the lead trend hunter for the German Toy Fair in Nuremberg, um, the Spielwaren Messe. I look at toys, technology, games, juvenile products, a wide spectrum of products. I go to about 24 trade shows a year and I speak at about 20 of them. Um, and I also go to individual showrooms at headquarter offices, Mattel, Hasbro, Lego, you know, a couple times a year I'll go to their headquarters to find out what they're doing, what's happening. Because a lot of the trends come from the big companies and trickle down, but a lot of trends also start from the smaller companies and then they're trying to play catch up. Um, the keynote speeches I talked about, I'm on a number of juror committees for the Nuremberg Fair, the Toy of the Year Award for the Toy Industry Association. Uh, the CAPI Awards is the CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, so the, the best of kids technology um, awards. Um, the Toy Insider is a gift guide that the uh, Adventure Publishing puts out each year in cooperation with Women's Day. So we look at hundreds and hundreds of products and we pick the top about 150 in different toy categories, zero to two, three to five, six to eight, and we look across different skill sets so that we're getting a wide variety of smaller manufacturers, mid-tier and larger manufacturers, entertainment partners, non-licensed products, so really kind of a wide spectrum. And that, you can also go to thetoyinsider.com and see some of the um, things. I've been doing that since 2006. I'm always looking for that trickle-down effect, the things that are happening in greater society that adults are doing that kids are gonna wanna emulate and role play later, or that they're just gonna wanna have that cool technology. And then which companies, I give some examples of companies who have actually you know, gone into those worlds now. I'm a consultant um, on trends, strategy, media, PR placement, because I've been in the industry for 30 years and worked across a, you know, a pretty wide spectrum of toy companies uh, and manufacturers. I'm a journalist, I'm published in 60 countries. I just got elected as co-president of the International Toy Trade Man um, Magazine Association, which is worldwide. And I'm a media spokesperson, so I'm actually on TV over 100 times a year. And I also do, you know, I write for the trade publications and stuff. So I'm, I'm busy, I'm traveling a lot. My kids are graduated, they're off in college. My daughter's an international model. So the, the wanderlust is uh, across our whole family. Um, there's three main trends I'm gonna talk to this year, but these aren't the only trends. Within each of these, there's many trends, and there's other trends that are beyond these three that I'll talk about later. But these are three of the top trends. So little scientists or little scholars are juggling numbers, they're tinkering with technology, they're exploring science and examining the world around them. And this is really tied into the whole STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, which now has actually expanded to be called STREAM, which is science, technology, robotics, engineer, engineering, art, and math. So art and language arts are also now you know, being inc incorporated into what kids want to know and learn, need to know as they move forward. Express Yourself ties more into hands-on play with um, crafts, creativity, self-expression, customization, um, you know, imagination and creativity, exploring ways kids can express their inner artists. I mean, kits, crafts, role play, those are all important. And, you know, the kid having that self-esteem of finalizing those, um, you know, making something that really has a beautiful end product at the end. Beyond Reality is a lot about technology, discovery, how technology enhances the learning. Um, there's wearables, there's robots, there's gesture control, motion control. All of these new technologies are being brought into the world of toys now. Um, and these are just three trends that encourage kids to learn through interaction and hands-on play. Little scientists, now what I tend to do is I, I use the examples to call out different points of view. Like for example, 4M is a Canadian company and they use things that you can find around the house or that are at home like this brush and then you add the eyeballs and you add the little things and you make it move. So they bring technology to products that are recyclable, reusable in your home, but it also makes the package 
you know, less expensive because they don't have to include the brush. They don't have to include a lot of the things if they're at home, like a, a bottle or a um, make to play does the same thing. A lot of the companies where you use, um, you know, just recycled bottles or paper or something. Um, this company is also a Canadian company, Abouf. They make these wonderful um, catapults that kids can play with and learn how to, um, how how different weights of product can fly differently and go different distances. East Co Light Company is from Hong Kong. I try and show a worldwide um, perspective of where companies are coming from too. So East Co Light has this anatomy kit now. So like the whole body, you know, it's about this tall and there's different pieces that come off so you can see inside and the kids get a real hands-on three-dimensional play, but it also comes with cards and it teaches them about nutrition and what, what, what does the liver do? Why is it so important to the body? You know, what, what does our heart do? What if you didn't, have, what if your heart stops? And it gives like different, you know, ways for kids to learn in a, in a way that kids would normally and just through natural curiosity question things. Now, some of the little scientists also includes math. So the Tigley products, the Tigley counts, they use digital learning with a, with a digital platform like a tablet, but they have physical counting blocks, like the little bars there, these bars here are like the Montessori bars for counting, five, four, three, two, one. And as you play, the kids use the different size bars to accomplish the different tasks. So there's different ways to learn by using that. And Part of the learning from those of you that also have educational products know that the more of your senses that you use in teaching a child or in, in the child's process of learning, the better they remember it. It becomes more relevant to them and builds uh, deeper STEM you know, paths. Um, if they're using their eyes, their hands, their sight, their touch, their taste, everything around them uh, to learn. Um, gyroscopes. I mean, simple gyroscopes that you can have impulse right in the front of the store is teaching kids about science also. And then there's, of course, much more advanced robotics, and we'll get into some of those later. Minecraft, Lego just started with their Minecraft sets in, Janu sets in January. They didn't even do hardly any advertising, and they were selling off the shelves like crazy because of the kids who love Minecraft. Well, they found through some research already, that the parents are actually playing with the kids in the Lego sets, because when a kid's involved in the Minecraft game, they're like way into it themselves, it's solo play. But when you play with them offline, and say, okay, now we're gonna have some off time, and you play in offline, the parents can ask them about, so what do you do when you're in this world? How do you build things? What is this little creeper guy? What does Steve do, and why is he so important? And they can have a, a dialogue and a conversation, especially with their teenagers who are still playing Minecraft and love it. So it's really kind of 7 to 14, um, but some kids that are younger are loving it and having birthday parties. Thames and Cosmos, this is um, from the parent company Cosmos, one side of it from Germany, and they have the new in wind energy set. But what I really liked about this one is that you actually get all the parts to build the windmill, and then after you build it, you put it outside and you actually put it in an area where there's a lot of wind, so it generates a lot of power, and you've got a little car attached in the back. So it's gaining power. Then when they get home from school, for example, they take the car off, and their car will go on the wind power that they generated that day. So it's teaching them not just how to build it and how to do it in, you know, in policy, but also in practice, and so that they can see that what they're doing is making an impact. Space exploration is going to be another big theme this year with Toy Story representing their 20th anniversary this year. I can't believe it's already 20 years. Uh, Little Bits has come up with a you know, satellite that kids can make and actually make work and turn and all those things. This is a company out of New York, Little Bits. Toyish is a new company and this is their little three astronauts where the kids can actually build the pieces. They can color it and decorate it and personalize it themselves and fit it inside of the, um, the shell. And then it has wheels and they can play with it afterwards as well. Um, this is a game called, for those people who were looking into games, this is a space game. It's probably more of an advanced game for older players 12 and up, but you each have your own flight you know, flight uh, planes and there's a lot of strategy involved in it. And then, for example, there's a company we're going to get into later about subscriptions, but Kiwi Crate has their Tinker line. So there's a lot of kits that you can go and subscribe to online, and then every month they'll come to your home or to your store. You can have a craft class where the kids are learning how to do these different things. And they have a very um, innovative way. They, they have the product that they can build. It comes with a blueprint. It tells them how to use it and then applications for the product. 
There's a lot of do-it-yourself subscription kits out there right now. So one of them I just talked about, the Kiwi Crate, they have a koala crate for the youngest kids, just about playing, learning, and crafts. They have open-ended uh, learning in their Kiwi Crate. Then they've got their Tinker Crate, which is more about science and technology. And then they've got for the older kids, the teens and tweens, once again, bringing in that creativity and customization um, with their, I can't read it from here, what that one's called. Doodle Crate. Um, so it's about you know, self-expression. And this is an example of how some of the kits come, you know, all the things that come with it. And then there's also online subscriptions for learning now for kids that will eventually have also physical products that you can sell with them. For example, the Disney Imagine Academy just launched. And they have Mickey and his friends teaching kids about science, math. By the end of the year, they'll be including language arts and social skills. But what's nice is they have five different modules within the app. Hi, how good to see you. Um, and they're going to have um, product that, you know, have smart toys that will interact also with the digital learning later. But what's nice is they, they just came out with their creativity kit, which is called Mickey's Magical Art Studio. And kids can actually learn cartooning, so they can go and draw on their tablet computer, and their drawings go into a cartoon that's live action with Mickey and Minnie. So they're doing cartooning at age four and five, and seeing their pictures come to life in little cartoons. And there's architecture, you know, learning how to build up a city and things. It's very easy, you know, learning. It's not like real heavy learning, but it's very engaging for the kids. And there's also a parent app. So the parents get tips on what their kids are doing, and they can bring up conversations. Hey, your kid just had a drawing or just engaged in the cartooning. Maybe you could ask them about that tonight. Um, Luminosity has their brain training classes for adults. They now have Lumi Kids. So kids that are going on and learning how to train their brains also, and having different engaging activities that help them with language or art or numbers or whatever it is, because kids are naturally curious and they love to learn. But it just gives you an opportunity to actually measure some of that learning and see how it's, you know, what your kids are interested in. And then Little Passports has been around for a while. And those are also kits that come, that teach kids about geography. A different, you know, country or a different state comes in the mail every month and the kids actually get a kit and a passport and they learn about kids and what they eat and they do. So these are things that you could in incorporate into your stores, for example. Um, getting some of these kits and having craft classes or having kids come and share their experiences if they've been to some of those countries. Or if your kids are learning you know, Spanish in school or Italian in school, you could set up a class where they can also have an adventure or an escape you know, by doing one of these experiential opportunities.